Hello, and thank you for tuning in. This is Tamika Jenkins, Licensed Clinical Mental Health Counselor. I just wanted to stop by today just to, just to encourage you just a little bit. I know there's a very anxious time in our country and in our world. COVID-19 has basically taken over. It's taken over the TVs, the radio, the social media, our schools, our churches, everything. To a certain degree, that is. Look, the anxiety is understandable. It is real. But I want to challenge you today to refrain from focusing on that which you cannot do and begin to focus on what you can do. We want to honor the COVID-19 um, orders of shelter in place or stay at home or or just social distancing, all of the above and then some, the self quarantines, all of that. Because ultimately we want what's in the best interest of our family, our friends, our country, our world, right? So we're ready to get this thing under control so we can move on about our business, correct? So one of the things is, is that Anxiety is often triggered by a loss of control. And that's what has happened here. There has been a loss of control on many fronts. See, we are used to being in control of our daily moves, where we go, what we do, how we navigate, all of those things. Well, ultimately, we've been told you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't go to work. You can't go to church. You can't go to school. You can't go to the gym. You can't go anywhere except for those places which are essential is what we've been told, right? And so if we focus on that, whoa, we're in a world of despair. We're anxious. We're nervous because we don't know what's going on, what's going to happen. And we feel trapped. I want to challenge you to change the story you're telling yourself. Yeah, they said all that. Can't, 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 can't. But let's focus on what we can do. See, you may not be able to go to work, the physical building, but you may be able to work remotely or virtually online. And if you can't even do that, then you can work in your home you can work in your community and still uphold the, you know, the orders and abide by what our health professionals are telling us, right? There's still work you can do. It just may look different. You may not be able to go to school, but you can still learn. You can learn whether they're teaching your classes online or they're not teaching at all. You can still learn. You can learn by doing research, by reading, by writing, by there are a million and different one programs online that teach math, reading, science, social studies, history, and more. So even though you may not be able to go to school, you can still learn. Okay, they close the gyms. You may not be able to go to the YMCA or Planet Fitness or Club Fitness or any of the other gyms that are in your area but you can still exercise. You can go out for a walk, you can go for a jog, you can exercise in your backyard, your front yard, your living room, your loft, wherever, your garage, you can still exercise. You, They said you can't go to church because no more than 10 people can be in one place. And most of the churches today are well over 10 people. There are a few that are not, but most are. So you cannot go to your church as you normally would, correct? Okay, I get it. So, but you can still worship because the church is in you to begin with. So when, with all the streaming online and all of that, you can still worship, but you don't have to wait till Sunday morning at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock to do that either. You can still worship right where you are at the moment that is, that is given unto you. See, we have been focusing on the wrong thing. We've been focusing on that which we cannot do. And I want to encourage you today to focus on that which you can do. If we just change the story in which that we are telling ourselves, the anxiety will decrease. It will subside. It will. 
Are there some hard days ahead? Absolutely. But I want to say this, there were hard days ahead with or without the coronavirus. See, we never know what's going to happen from one day to the next, from one hour to the next. We just think we do. And so we got in the habit of living each day like tomorrow was promised. And so I want to encourage you today to focus on that which you can do today and let tomorrow take care of itself, okay? So if you are feeling overly anxious and you don't know what to do, the last thing I wanna encourage you to do, we already talked about what you can do. We wanna focus on what you can do versus what you can't do. Because can is what? Is affirmative, is positive. It means that I can do something. I am moving forward. I am moving on. I refuse to be what? Stuck. That is can, right? The next thing I want to talk to you about, just briefly, is I want to encourage you to disconnect to reconnect. See, we're so used to, you know, watching CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, the local TV channels, you know, logging on to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of that for the news. Well, oftentimes that overexposes us to this and we're focused on all of the negative things that are surrounding the situation that we're in right now. And I want to challenge you something. If you disconnect, you actually can reconnect. You can reconnect with your children, with your husband, with your family members, whether they live in the house with you or not, with your friends that you may not get to talk to as much. You can actually reconnect. So I want to challenge you to disconnect to reconnect. Call somebody that you haven't talked to in a while. You can text them too, but I want to challenge you to call them. Have a conversation with them. Check on them. Hear their heart. Hear their spirit. Talk to them. Laugh. Reminisce. See, that's another can, right? See, that's what you can do. You may not be able to drive to their house and give them a hug, but you can call them on the phone. You can even FaceTime them. We got these little smart devices now where you can FaceTime people and all of that. Um, or do Hangout and Duo and Zoom and all of these different things. You can still see their face. You may not be able to touch them, but you can still touch them with your heart. So I want to encourage you today to focus on what you can do versus what you can't do. I want to also encourage you to disconnect, to reconnect. And just change the story you're telling yourself about this thing. See, this is something that is happening. And while it all affects us, we can determine what we do with how it affects us. We can for the most part. Yes, there are sadly many, many people who are being hospitalized and some are even dying and in no way shape form or fashion do we want to minimize that and we extend our heart and our thoughts and our prayers to them and to all medical professionals and to all food service people to all the people who do not have the luxury or the privilege of staying at home but those of us who can stay at home stay at home that's our part. That is what we are to do. And change the story you're telling yourself. Get your eyes off of can't and refocus them onto can. Oftentimes, when we are derailed or off track, I've said this many times before, and we have a a setback of some sort it is oftentimes the opportunity for us to refocus our thoughts our minds and our hearts on more of what God would have us to do see it's just like in any sports right oftentimes when you get in trouble and you playing basketball or soccer or even football what do you do? You retreat so that you can have a larger view, a better view of the court, of the field, right? So that you can make a better play. 
So although we've been asked to retreat, we've been asked to take a step back, challenge yourself not to look at this as a setback, but as a setup. And when this thing is over, I pray that you come out renewed, refocused, and more determined than you have ever been in your life. God is still with us. Don't let the naysayers tell you any different. He's still with us. You still here and I'm still here. Death comes every single day. But we don't focus on it every single day. So don't let COVID-19 take you into a place that is so dark you can't come back from. But if you find yourself struggling beyond what you can work your way out of, what you can pray your way out of, what you can talk your way out of, please reach out to a mental health professional for assistance. In, in your local area, you don't know who to call, you don't know who to reach, feel free. Number one, I want to first and foremost ask you to DM me. And if I can be of assistance in any way to you to help get you connected in your area, I will. I know how to research. I know how to find local professionals to help folks with mental health issues. That I can do. But secondly, you can also contact your insurance company and they will help you find a professional. Most, if not all of us, are now virtual because we have to be. And that's okay. But we're still here to help you. But also, you can dial one 800 950-6264 that is the National Alliance on Mental Illness and they will connect you or help you get connected to someone in your area to assist you through this time don't be ashamed ain't no shame in it God has gifted many people to help us at different points and times in our life if we've got money questions or whatever we look for accountants we got heart issues, we look for cardiologists, right? We got something wrong with our feet, we look for podiatrists. So if our mind is, is racing, is, we're anxious, we're nervous, we're scared, we're depressed, whatever, he has gifted therapists, psychologists, and psychiatrists to help us through these crisis times. So I just want to encourage you today that there is so much more that you can do. And if you dare to focus on that, things will seem and be so much better. Take care, everyone. Be blessed, and better yet, be a blessing.